The Jacobs Institute mission is really designed around innovation through technology to impact vascular disease. Every person's disease is inherently different. So 3D printing for us gives us the real uncanny ability to design a product, design a treatment, design an approach. Typically, how would you do that? Well, you'd have to do a protocol and a trial and a study. Now we can come upstairs and get the actual information off a C arm in the lab, print it off within several hours, and have a physician from downstairs just come up and try it. The first foray we had was in device testing. We were trying to test how effectively a particular kind of tube can get up to the brain, depending on tortuosity. We designed a series of models with differing level of tortuosity from the chest all the way to the brain, and then tested the devices to see how they performed under those circumstances. Again, impossible to do in animals, impossible to do in patients, and really 3D printing makes it so easy to be able to do that in a smooth, streamlined fashion. And when you print out these models and they try to mimic a vascular feel, um, the materials and how we use it, it really allows us to create a lifelike environment that I don't think is really achievable any other way. 3D printing is creating a whole different way to do that. Being able to plan complex procedures with a team, the utility of training our fellows, our cardiovascular fellows, our residents, surgical fellows, in understanding anatomy and understanding three-dimensional relationships with a model like this is unique. Because right now we prepare for complications on a theoretical basis. Often you're faced with circumstances where we don't know what to do. Teresa was a special case. She had complex, multiple set of problems. And then the final problem that we had to deal with was with this brain aneurysm. We took the anatomy uh, of Teresa uh, based on her angiograms and CT angiograms. When printed through the Stratasys uh, 3D printer, allowed us to generate entire replica of her entire brain blood vessel anatomy. So originally our plan was to treat her aneurysm with a metallic basket called the web device. What we were able to do in this case, take a tube and try to deploy that web device and wasn't going to work. If I did not have the model, I would have gone up, tried to size the aneurysm, tried to approach it with the catheter, tried to deploy the device, withdraw everything, and then come to the same conclusion as I did with the model. The model allowed me to preempt all those struggles and potential complication and bypass that methodology to go for something that was going to work much better for Teresa. If you could operate on the person before you operated on them, how would that device feel? Would you use a different device? Would you not treat the patient? Would you now treat the patient differently? There is enough complexity in disease and anatomy that I think having this readily available at hand can be very, very useful and most importantly provide patients a much safer means of care. We have all the right pieces and if you partner right with Stratasys, we'll all be kind of seeing the same thing in parallel and that's all driven through partnerships and collaboration. So it's a really fun place to be at this time.